Um, I'd like to uh, thank Terry again for inviting me. It's been, uh, last time I was here was Norfolk, uh, it was in 15. Um, this conference is always a great conference. I have a lot to put into a short period of time here. Um, just to give you a little background, some of you know who I am. Uh, I'm, my name is William Buhlman. I'm the author of Adventures Beyond the Body, which was published, it's hard to believe, 23 years ago. I'm the residential out-of-body experience trainer at the Monroe Institute in Virginia. And um, for some of you I know or don't know much about the Institute, a lot of people think it's totally focused on OBEs. It is not. Uh, we offer over 16 different workshops on the exploration of consciousness, uh, all kinds of explorations, uh, including past life, retrieval, you name it. Um, a lot of different um, skills are developed there by people who are interested in different aspects of consciousness exploration. Uh, the Institute is de developed for the exploration of consciousness without any overtones, no religious overtones. It's about each individual having their own personal experience. What makes it unique, and I'd just like to cover it briefly because it's the only place in the world like it, only 24 people can attend each workshop and each individual is in their own, we call them check units, but it's, it's like a isolation chamber that each person is in. And we use high technology audio frequencies called hemisync and spatial annulation, new type of technology to help people to go deeper and deeper and deeper into altered states so you can get the most out of your explorations of consciousness. It's very individualized. I speak to my participants once. I give them instructions in a meeting room and then we all, they all go to their isolation chambers and then I guide them through special sound frequencies and through audio technology and voice visualizations to have their own experience. That's what makes it so unique. Most people, as you know, are laying out on the floor somewhere, which is the way I used to do it for uh, many, many, well, for over two decades when I was traveling extensively doing workshops. So the, uh, just to give you a little overview, um, many people are unaware that I do two different kinds of workshops. Everybody's aware of the out-of-body aspect of what I teach because of my books. I have two books on out-of-body experiences and two books on the afterlife and how to prepare for the afterlife. With that in mind, uh, this year, my wife, who is here with us, who's a death doula, my wife and I developed an online course for preparation for the afterlife called Our Incredible Journey. It's to assist individuals to not only be prepared for this transition of consciousness that we call death, but also to assist others, including pets, because everyone, everyone moves on to another dimensional space. So this is new, it's a six week online course, um, which actually starts on the 10th of this month. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm not totally focused only on out of body experiences. So let's get to it quickly. Um, many people ask me, and let's just, the big question, I know some of you are probably not familiar with this topic. And the question that I often get is, why? People don't still today, and it's 2018, they don't quite get the significance of why an out-of-body experience has significance to them. We're, we're all on this physical journey, and a lot of people feel that that's where they should stay, which is fine, we all make choices. But what I'd like to at least get across to you to some point is that all profound experiences throughout the history of mankind, when you examine them objectively, they were all projections or expansions of consciousness beyond the body to some extent. 
Most people don't connect the dots, though. It goes back to even biblical times when the book of Revelations begins with, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What does that mean? Throughout biblical text, I was in the spirit is repeated again and again. What does that mean? I was in a trance state. It, but it obviously, when you start describing, as St. John did in Revelations, he experiences a non-physical city in another dimensional space. Obviously, he's talking about leaving his body consciously and entering another dimensional reality that he described to the best of his, his ability. In other words, the concept of out-of-body experiences goes back to the beginning of mankind, to early shamanism. Even in Islam, Muhammad's, he calls it the seven heavens that he traveled through. It's interesting. Seven different dimensions, and he describes them. And he's obviously not in his body. Many of the mystics throughout history, if you examine it objectively, Buddhist, it doesn't matter what religion you look at, it, there is a core common element that runs through all of these saints, all of these mystics, all of these founders of religion, including St. Paul, who talks about in 2 Corinthians that, that he refers to the third heaven. And whether in the body or out of the body, I know not. But I was swept up to the third heaven. He didn't say heaven. He said third heaven. It's interesting. Referring to a multidimensional spectrum available. So what I and others have begun to do is actually begin to explore this. And I want to give you a little background on this so you can, a little history. I was not a believer in... Back in, I was in college, back in the early 70s, give you a little history. And I was, this was not on my agenda. Matter of fact, I had rejected, I was pretty much an atheist. And a friend, but a friend of mine, and both of us were in college studying philosophy and sociology. And one day, my friend had a spontaneous out-of-body experience. And now, of course, we know that that's quite common. Spontaneous experiences are way more common than self-initiated, because they're natural. And he come to me the next day and explained to me his life-changing experience. And he was blown away by it, totally transformed him. And I was intrigued by it, because I believed him. We went to grade school together. I knew this guy for 20 years. So he motivated, motivated me to get interested, and I wanted to have the experience he had. This is back in 73, just to put it in, in exact terms. And I did a little research, and even back in 73, there was literature and books available on how to self-initiate an out-of-body experience. So I studied this book, and I found that there was techniques. And they're relatively easy. And I began doing the techniques. This one technique, which I call the target technique, that I teach today. It's very simple. It's all I did is every night as I fell asleep, I would imagine three objects in my mother's house. Three silly things that only a mother could love that I had made. Little things in shop and pictures of fish, etc. They were my targets, three targets in my mother's home. I was in a dorm at the time. And every night, I would imagine that I'm moving to those targets, examining them, touching them. In other words, I am focusing my conscious awareness beyond my body solely until I drift to sleep. And it didn't take 15, 20 minutes I did this, and the book made it clear that it takes dedication. It takes daily practice, and that's what I did. I was determined. So for 24 days, I did this technique. And believe me, after about two weeks, you're wondering, oh my god, this is just hooey. It's not real. Keep in mind, I'm not a believer. I know nothing about this topic. I'm clueless. 
But I kept it up. I was determined. And on the 24th day, doing this simple little target technique, I awoken and I was in a single bed and I was facing the wall on my side, on my left side. And I woke up highly energized, for lack of a better word. I felt different. I was lighter, more vibrant. Some of you have already experienced this. And as I reached out my arm, my arm went into the physical wall that was in front of me. My hand went into the wall. And that's, that's the first real clue I had that, oh my god, I did it. I did it. I thought of standing, and the next thing I knew, I was standing by the foot of my bed, looking down on this lump on the bed. And I was in shock. I, there's no other word for it. Total shock. Because I was trying to basically disprove it. And, and then I look around, and I'm trying to get, you know, again, you're, I'm excited, so you have to stay calm. I was doing my best just to stay calm. And as I looked around my little room, it's almost like I began to see beyond the perimeter of the walls. And I noticed that there was a man in a robe and a dark beard watching me. And I'll be quite honest with you, it scared me. It was unexpected. And I instantly snapped back into my body. The last thing I expected was to see someone else. <laughs> and it was, I tell you, it's strange things like that can happen. Anyway, here I am. I'm back in my body. I'm feeling vibrations flowing through me. I'm numb. It takes me about a minute to adapt. And then it's like my entire paradigm, everything shifted at that single moment. I, suddenly, I became what some people call a knower instead of just a believer. I knew suddenly. I went from being an atheist to an absolute knowledge not only do I continue and I can function outside of my body, but that other people live there also or dwell there. And that I could self-initiate this experience. It was mind-blowing. It was paradigm shifting, to put it mildly. And it, it was beyond excitement. I remember, I still have the notes of the time I wrote all the notes. Everything I had learned in college seemed like null and void. It's like I'm studying sociology and it's like, who cares? There's all that fellow like screaming into the world. There's other dimensions here, people. We can explore them. We can get there. We can do it ourselves. We don't have to be, we don't have to be believers. Of course, I found out in the 70s, if you did that, you, <laughs> you found out real quick. The first statement was, what are you smoking? <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. And people did not find that kind of uh, experience, especially in the 70s. It's so new, so fresh. It wasn't widely accepted. The term out-of-body experience may have not even been coined by that, to put it in a reference point. So at that point, I became just an avid explorer of this topic. I began to take it seriously because I knew it was real. I began to have a lot of experiences. And I began to, I learned that there was many techniques. I learned, started to learn about metaphysics. And I certainly started to learn about multidimensional reality because I was experiencing that. I learned that there was many, many things. And keep in mind, this is 45 years ago. So after opening this, and 25 years ago, I started teaching it all over the place. My first book was released. And I began traveling the world. Luckily, my book was released and did well. And it was in eight languages. Uh, Raymond Moody endorsed the cover, which was nice of him. And I got to travel the world telling people the potential of this, the possibility of it. So the question is, and I've, I already had this question at the conference, why? Why is that important to you, though? Answers. Answers. If you want to actually know, go beyond belief, if you want personal verification, this is one way to achieve it, and much more. I know many of you are here at the conference to get insights or contact with your loved ones. It's only natural. We have the ability to do that ourselves. 
I have con my mother has contacted me, my deceased mother has contacted me, or I have contacted her a dozen times over the past 20 years. It's face to face. What's amazing is when I see her, she's, she's no longer the 75-year-old overweight woman. She's a beautiful woman in her, say, 25, 26 years old, just in her prime, which is often because I've found, as others have found, when we make the transition that we call death, our self-concept will mold our energy body. That's why this is so common. And there is, as we talked about last night here, there's no communication blockages. There's no because we communicate by thought directly to one another. It's, it's amazing, it's eloquent, it's so wonderful. I spent four years in China and I've had experiences with Chinese people that are dead and we can communicate perfectly. There's no language problems or let's just say challenges. <coughs> so why do people pursue this? I consider out-of-body experiences to be a spiritual path. I know it's not everyone does. I know that's not the case, but that's how I teach it. In my six-day class, which is it's called OB Intensive, it's an intensive class. You do 27 different techniques, each of them 50 minutes long, in your isolation chamber. The purpose is for you to, to have your own profound experience. I try to give everyone an opportunity to have their own profound experience. I don't frame it for them. I don't tell them what it means. Each individual has to come to their own determination. And that's, that's our philosophy, basically, if there is one. And it's always been mine. I do not frame someone else's experience with any kind of, let's just say, religious or intellectual overtones. The point here that we have, we can be empowered to obtain the answers for ourselves. And this is so important in this day and age because we live in a society and a culture overwhelmed with information, aren't we? 50,000 books published every year. The internet's exploded. Tons and tons of information on social media. There's no shortage of information. What's needed is personal verification and expansion of your own level of experience. Because how will you ever know something unless you experience it? I use the analogy that I could read a thousand books about being a woman in this plane. But one incarnation as a woman, I might start to get it. A thousand books wouldn't give it to me. We experience is why we're here. Experience and the expansion of our ability to have experience is critical to our evolutionary cycle. Because we're all here for a purpose. Think about it for a moment. How the average person, let's face it, there's seven and a half billion people on the planet. Seven and a half billion people. They're, we're all on this unified, kind of similar journey of consciousness through this biological body. We're on this journey that lasts 80 to 90 years and the vast majority of these seven billion people have no idea what the destination point is. Think of it. You wouldn't go a day without planning your meals. You wouldn't go anywhere without having a plan of action. But yet we're ready to settle for this lack of knowledge about the, our journey of life. It's unacceptable because that the answers are available if we are willing to take the necessary steps to become explorers of consciousness and not believers in consciousness. If you look at the founding fathers of any mystical group and organization, you'll find that they were experiencers. They were having profound, they weren't limited, they weren't special. Everyone has the ability to have their own profound experiences, but we have to open for it. See, here's the issue, I think. We've been, for, and I'll be blunt about it, 
from birth, we have been deceived and lied to about many things, about what we are and who we are and where we're going. We've been told that the brain is the origin of consciousness, a lie. Near-death experiences and OBEs prove it's a lie, but yet they continue to spout that, don't they? There's many parts of our culture that are based on this idea that we are bodies. From the moment you're born, you're conditioned, you're programmed to believe that you're your biological body. I realize that that's essential for socialization. Absolutely. But it's not true. We are so much more than that. We are hardwired through our multidimensional self. And that's why this is so important. So why are OBEs important to you? This is just a small list. Personal answers, of course. Verification and confirmation of your own immortality. Expansion of consciousness because you begin to explore your multidimensional self. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of serious explorers out there that have been charting the universe now for decades. Generally, they, they don't stand in front of groups like this and talk. They, they keep it to themselves. But at the Monroe Institute for 45 years and at other places, there have been serious explorations going on into the nature of reality and the nature of the universe and how we fit within it. What are we? Everybody assumes the answer. The answers are far more wonderful than anything that we've ever learned throughout our lives. Far more expansive, far more exciting than anything that we have been taught throughout our entire lives. The universe, and we know this for a fact, everybody considers the universe the physical and the non-physical. Call it whatever you will, don't they? And there's the veil. You know what we've discovered? This physical universe is the thin outer epidermis of the universe. It's not the center of the universe. It's basically the butthole. It's the, exter it's the external part. It's the absolute dense outer crust. I can't emphasize this enough. When people die, when they have out-of-body experiences, when they have near-death experiences, they are shifting their consciousness inward within themselves, within their multidimensional self. We are far more fascinating than body, mind, spirit. We are multidimensional beings. And there's many kinds of out-of-body experiences depending on the type of energy body you enter when you shift your consciousness. If you are experiencing a physical surroundings, as many people do at the very beginning, you're in your etheric body. You're in your densest energy body. People think that's it. I found out in the 70s that was not it. I initially, that's what I thought it was too. And then I found out there was another energy body. And that it had more freedom. Each energy body, each dimensional space allows us, gives us more freedom, more capabilities. It's mind-blowing. Meeting loved ones. I already mentioned this, and since many of you are interested in this, we in the 2018, we no longer have to be dependent on others for contact. We inherently all possess that ability, but we have to open to it. We've settled as a society, as, a, as, a, as humanity, really, we have settled so easily for so little. And part of that is due to the programming and indoctrination we've received as children. And we all have received it. I received it. I remember my mother. I would go to my mother with a profound dream when I was a child. And immediately, oh, William, that is just a dream. Basically, it's nothing. Blow, you know. That's, and we all experience this. All, any experience you have that doesn't match matter is considered unreal. 
So what happens? We begin to shut down even in our youth. And we've all done this. We've done it unknowingly. We have all begun to shut down probably before puberty because of we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned that we're a biological body and that's all we are. We're conditioned to a gender. Then we're conditioned to a nationality. And it's all conditioning. Girls wear pink, boys wear blue. We, we take this stuff for granted, but we're being programmed from birth to accept the limits. We, you are your body and that's where you belong. And unfortunately, the religions also, you have to, you can't be empowered to have your own profound spiritual experience. You have to depend on us. We have to be your intermediator. Isn't it the truth? And I grew up that way. I was an altar boy, believe it or not. It's hard to believe. I can't believe it. And I, was, I remember studying that catechism and sweating bullets, trying to memorize that thing, and then the pastor would grill you and the past confirmation. What is that but indoctrination? We take it for granted. It's part of our culture. What's the difference between that pastor grilling me for confirmation and all these boys in morasses in Pakistan studying the Quran all day long. That's what I was studying that catechism all day long. Indoctrination, indoctrination, indoctrination. But what's the end result? Limits, limits, limits. You are not capable. You have to depend on some external force, some external knowledge, some external organization, of course, because you are not worthy now, many of us already, we've all, many of you have evolved beyond that. I realize that. But I want you to realize that often we still, from childhood, we have settled for too little. We have settled for be man-made beliefs that are 2,000 years old. We've settled for assumptions and uh, conclusions that are no more valid than your own. When each of us are hardwired to our higher self or the source. We are multi-dimensional beings. We know this through experience, through decades of experience, that we are all immortal, powerful, multi-dimensional beings. Think of it. It's exciting. We don't need any external of anything. You are it. You are there. You are you, the whole. We are a microcosm of the entire multi-dimensional body universe, which is vast. More dimensions than I can begin to count. Dimensions within dimensions, or what some people call heavens within heavens. But we are there. An aspect of ourself already exists there. And we have the ability to open to that ability to explore ourself. The greatest threat to humanity is lack of knowledge of self. Think of this. Why is there division in the world? Why is the human race nothing but wars for 3,000 years? You know, I'm 68 years old, and I have never lived in America when we weren't, almost never lived in America when there wasn't a war. We were fighting a war. I was born during the Korean War, grew up during the Vietnam War. Think about this. My son fought in the Iraq War as a sergeant in the Marines, two tours. Why? This, why is there such division in every aspect of life? Why are there camps growing on either side? Lack of knowledge of self. That's the core issue facing humanity. That's the core issue facing humanity, America, and us individually. And how do we overcome this? We have to expand our experiences so we know what we are. No longer believe, know from experience. Imagine the world if everyone, seven billion people, had a profound out-of-body experience and they connected and got a, just a taste of what they really were. Imagine the shift that would occur in the world. It's beyond, it's mind blowing. People would look at one and I'm fighting you for what? For a hunk of land, a dirt, 
for ideology that's all lies anyway. In other words, that is the issue of really this century, I think, is obtaining self-knowledge so that we are no longer, let's face it, people through the media, through government, through we're constantly being manipulated, especially now during an election cycle. It's sickening. Constantly being manipulated to buy product. Think about it, in airwaves, everywhere we turn. We're, we're manipulated by religions, by governments, by groups, by political parties. But once you know what you are, truly know what you are, you can't be influenced by that crap. Because you, you stand, you can watch it and smile. The drama all around this, constant drama. It's, and I'm not, it's not going to go away. But we can evolve beyond it. We can move our consciousness. We can grow our consciousness. We can experience our true self beyond the biological temporary machine. So I want to shift this around just for a moment. Imagine this. Everybody thinks this is, unfortunately, they think that the biological body in this physical world is the center of the universe. I already said it's not, it's the epidermis. Let's flip it around. You know what's wild? Once you begin to have out-of-body experiences, guess what you realize? Everyone here is projecting their consciousness now. We are all projecting our consciousness temporarily into a biological machine. That's all this is. I am not this. You are not your body. We are projecting temporarily our consciousness into this biological vessel to experience temporarily. And in, think about it, as immortal beings, 80 years is that. Everything is a projection of consciousness. Everything is consciousness. And we know this for a fact. There is no real separation. It's the illusion of separation because of the density of the, and the slowness of form. OK, so how do, we have, how do we have these kinds of experiences? Most of you, many of you, who's had an out-of-body experience or feel like they have? OK, very good. Many of you have probably already had symptoms of one and don't even know it. Here's a list. I did a survey. This goes back almost, um, wow, tw almost 20 years. I did a survey. I just had 16,000 participants from 42 nations. And this was the results of this survey I did. And some of this you'll probably relate to. Who has ever experienced sleep paralysis? Probably about half of you, at least. In other words, you wake up and you can't move your body. Who's been terrified by it? It's also called sleep terrors. It's scary, isn't it? You can't move your body. Now, why? What's going on? Now, I know this, that's a biological function, so we don't act out in our dreams. Most of us know the biological reason, but what is the real reason? What's actually occurring? Do you know that I have found and others have found sleep paralysis is a platform for OBEs. If you stay calm and react calmly and have an action plan, you can easily initiate a conscious, mind-blowing out-of-body experience from sleep paralysis. You're already there. Your bodies, you're already technically dis connected from the outer vehicle. This is the outer vehicle we're using of consciousness. Same applies, who has seen through, you're in your bed at night and you can see through closed eyelids. It looks brighter. Same thing, you're already making a shift. Probably almost all of you in this hall have experienced one of these aspects. Seen through closed eyelids, 49%. Vibrations and high energy sensations. Very common, and it's so common, we call it the vibrational state. It's the normal prelude to an out-of-body experience. And I stress, normal. And it can get strange. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it gets weird. 
you can't move, you can't move your body because you're already beginning to disconnect from it temporarily. That's why you can't move it. Your uh, aspect of you is giving you an opportunity to explore. We haven't been taught this, though, have we? Instead, we hear this mumbo jumbo from the scientists and doctors. People take medication for it, for God, I just find it insane. When it's, this is a lot of the things that happen to you normally as you sleep are a doorway. It's a it's a doorway to a profound experience if you choose to enter the door and to use, have an action plan. Many people experience the buzzing, humming, and roaring sounds, 85%. Floating, oh my God, if you're floating, you're already there. You just have to direct yourself away from your body. How many people experience themselves floating? It's about 25 Thirty percent of you. You're already out of body, but you haven't been trained in how to react to the phenomena that's already happening to you. This is so important. And I understand that. This has been not this has not been studied largely until the last 40 years, really. Robert Monroe, myself, and others have devoted our lives to studying this topic and exploring it. So now after four decades of exploration, personal exploration, and exploration of many people, we've gained a tremendous amount of knowledge about not only what we are, but how we function. What is the real nature of reality? Not this sugar-coated stuff. People have no idea where they come from. Ask yourself, do you know where you come from before you were born? Do you know where you're going when you die? And, and I'm not looking for heaven. Do you know specifically what reality you're going to? You know what it's going to be like. Most people don't. This is why this is important. It's already happening to most of you. But you haven't been trained in how to respond to it and get the most of it. And the stake, of course, there's, and there's training involved. That's why I do a six-day program. And by the way, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm already full for next year. Just so you know, I'm just giving you the facts here. But it takes time. It took me 24 days. And I was a clueless kid in college. But it, it finally, with determination, dedication, and daily practice, I had my first experience. <laughs> you don't need super knowledge. You don't need to be a metaphysical uh, superstar and know all about everything. I didn't know about karma, I didn't know about reincarnation, I didn't know about any of that stuff, and I still had an out-of-body experience. It's about opening yourself to your own potential to explore yourself. It's about having the motivation to obtain the answers for yourself. It's about self-empowerment. When you experience your true self, you no longer have to be the pawn of belief systems. You're no longer the pawn of governments and political systems. You're no longer the pawn of the media. You're no longer the pawn of commercialism. Because you, you know what you are. And you know, it's, you know this is just a drama unfolding all around us, a temporary drama. And you, can, you can just look at it and smile inside and go, no way, I'm not going to fall for that one. That is baloney. Because most of the stuff we hear on TV is baloney. And I'm being nice. <laughs> so. We have the ability, each of us have the natural ability, because we're already multidimensional beings. That's why these experiences happen spontaneously. Now granted, some people are more open to them. I was pretty average. I wasn't, I wasn't some psychic, I had no psychic abilities or interest in it even. The point is, we're all multidimensional. And the way that, and once we, we put out our intention, and this is so important, you place your intention out to the universe, I will no longer settle for beliefs. I want to know. Give it to your higher self or your source, whatever term you like to use. You put it out there. This is important. Make it your affirmation. I am no longer content to live my life by faith and beliefs alone. I want to know from personal experience. The universe will come to your aid. It always does. It will, 
things will start to happen. You'll start to have lucid dreams. Typically, there's a scenario that seems to occur, a progression. You start to have lucid dreams, especially when you start doing OBE techniques. Suddenly, the lucid dreams become more and more lucid. You become more aware in your one-third of your life that we call sleep. And then suddenly, one day, you find yourself totally separated from the body. And that gives you an opportunity to explore. One of the things that I teach my students, and I have for over 20 years, this isn't about just flighting around the universe. Once you leave your body, you're that much closer to your source, to your higher self, to your, this higher aspect of yourself. And what I teach people to do and what I have done is you can initiate profound personal experiences. The purpose of out-of-body exploration is not to spy on your neighbors and to, to peek around corners and all that silly stuff. To be, at the beginning, it's quite exciting, now I must admit. <laughs> but that's not the purpose. Eventually, you get bored with that kind of stuff, walking through walls. Feels cool at first, but you get, what is the real purpose? You can move beyond your body. And then you declare to yourself, I always say to people, stabilize your energy field, stability now, awareness now. And then make the demand. You're making a demand on you, your higher aspect of your multidimensional self. And whatever term resonates with you, higher self now. And you can turn this simple out-of-body experience into a profound spiritual experience. I'll share one that I had, which I often don't, but I will in this case, because I think it's important. On more than one occasion when I've done that, what I've experienced is suddenly I feel like I'm shooting up. My mind perceives that it's up when I'm moving inward, actually, through layers of color and layers of color at the speed of light. It's, it's incredible. It's beyond my words to describe. And the end result is if you're ready for it, if you're open for it, is you, ex at least what I and others have experienced, is that you're floating in this sea of white light and you feel connected to everything. Humanoid form is gone. You're just a speck of consciousness floating, 360 degree vision or perception. There is no humanoid form. You're just you, pure consciousness, floating in this sea of pure love and for lack of, there's no words. But this is a type of experience that's possible. And it's readily available. Many years ago, I did a, I spoke at a conference where it was all yogis. It was a weekend conference like this. It was all yogis speaking. Um, different transcendental meditation, Raja yoga, some of the more profound, or let's say deeper yogas were covered in this conference. I was the only Western person at the conference. This happened in Michigan. Afterwards, I was one of the last ones to speak. And when, you know what was amazing to me? All of these yogis are describing their profound spiritual experiences they had through meditation and through their system of yoga, whatever it may be. And guess what? It's the same experience that OBEers have. You move inward within yourself and experience this amazing of experiencing your true self beyond all form. In fact, your biological form, when you have an out-of-body experience or a transcendental experience, the yogi said the same thing. When you hold that state, when you prolong your, let's just call it out-of-body state of consciousness, your biological body, your arms and legs, begin to dissolve away until eventually you become a globe and then a point of pure consciousness with 360 degree perception. It's the exact same thing the yogis described, just in their terms, in their own terms, using their own semantics. We have to remember, everybody's framing their experiences based on their culture and their indoctrination and their beliefs. That's why the term 
in the spirit is so relevant. In the spirit. They, they wouldn't have said I was out of my body, even though St. Paul actually says it in 2 Corinthians. My point is that this is nothing new. This is, a, this is an ability we all share. Here are some of the things we've learned, and just a few of them. And we know this for a fact. Of course, we can continue to exist without our bodies. We do it every time we have a, whether it's near death or out of body experiences. But here's the interesting thing it can be, we can enter and we can re enter the physical body without death. Many people are still not aware of this. People connect, unfortunately, the term near death for 25 years got a lot of attention, and rightly so. I understand that. It's dramatic. People loved it. They loved the concept of it. It gives you that four minute glimpse of the afterlife for that very brief period of time. Now, time doesn't exist, but the point is it's generally a singular experience. Imagine the power of this if you can do this again and again, and then begin to become an explorer of your own reality, of your own multidimensional space. During OBEs, we can exist for extended periods of time while separated from our body. I've done this and many others have for extended periods. I mean over an hour with no physical rep, none. Many of these things I've kind of covered now. We now, of course, know that our body is a temporary vehicle. And that when we prolong our out-of-body state, our humanoid form begins to fade. Why? Because our humanoid bodies are just a temporary vehicle of consciousness. It's not what we are. Yes, it's important. I'm not saying it's not. Right now, they're important. Our vehicles are important. We're using them for transportation and for learning and everything else. But it doesn't mean you're limited to that. So that's why this self-empowerment, I find, is the keynote of self-initiated out-of-body experiences. But it's not for everybody. It takes some courage to do this. It takes some courage to break free from traditions. It takes courage to break free from the paradigms that are so well established in, in our culture and society. It's, I've, many times people have said, oh, that's just weird. I, I, yeah, I guess for you it's weird, that's fine. The point is that we have to make a choice. Here are some of the basic realities we've gained. I'm going to cover this very quickly. This we know. Once you leave your body, none of these things exist. And this is the most interesting. By the way, there's no air. People still talk about I've read books already where people are breathing in the afterlife. I got news for you, there's no air. There's none of the things, there's no gravity even. There's no mass. You possess no mass. It's a consensus thought reality. Individual collectives, or what is now, or through thousands of years, been called heavens, they're collections. They are collectives of like-minded individuals that have molded a thought-responsive environment. The afterlife, the non-physical realities, are amazingly thought-responsive. They're all, to some degree, thought responsive. The physical world is thought responsive. It's just a slowed down reality. And there's a reason for that. It's almost like the playpen, where people can at least slows down the reaction time. But once you leave your body, you, have, you operated by a whole new rule. There's new rules here. There's a new state of being. All of this is absolutely true. And we live in a multi-dimensional universe. There's no decay. That's why the word paradise comes. I understand how many of the biblical texts talk about heaven and paradise. Compared to the physical world, it certainly is. Absolutely. There's no death. There's no molecular decay. There's no diseases. There's no war as we see it. There's no, a lot of the ills of humanity that have plagued humanity for thousands of years don't exist there. But there's still self-limits. If you die, if an, let's just to get blunt, if you're an ignorant, self-centered person and you die, you don't become an angel. 
you continue the exact same, your state of consciousness goes intact. That's what that's, and a lot of people find, I don't know why this is so shocking to some people. You don't be, and I know you guys are, are no better, but I'm amazed sometimes that people still think everybody becomes like a little angel. And they're flighting around in the clouds or something. It's amazing. It's like, oh my God, you're kidding me. You know, it's, it's hard to talk to people sometimes. The, there is no, there is no, Density, there's no air, there's no gravity, there's no matter. You live by another set of rules that are much more eloquent. You communicate in a much more eloquent. There's no air. You don't need vocal cords. You don't need ears. You don't need any of these things. But your self-concept follows through. When people die, they continue to hold the self-concept of themselves. That doesn't change. You bring your entire state of consciousness with you when you die. Good, bad, or indifferent. That's you, there. The same person, only you're vibrating differently and you're less dense. But other than that, it's the same you. And that's, that's why we have to work on ourselves now. That's why it's so important to become multidimensional now. The skills that you learn and abilities you develop in this life carry onward with you. Highly, highly important. Whatever you've developed in this life goes with you, your entire state of consciousness. If you have learned the skills to become a multi-dimensional explorer of the universe, those skills would also go with you. You're no longer limited to a single consensus reality. Who's read my book, Adventures in the Afterlife? I detail this clearly in this book about how an individual dies, his entire state of consciousness, and then you have to be, there are schools available, yes, on the different dimensions where we start to learn things and develop our skills. But it's so important while in this body, this is so important in the densest aspect of the entire multi-dimensional universe, when the skills you learn now are so important because they will determine the freedom that you will have in the non-physical realities. I don't like the term afterlife particularly. It's just a continuation of life, as we all know. And we're all going to continue, and we're all going to be learning and developing our ability to be, become multi-dimensional beings. I think that's essentially, people talk about angels, maybe that's what they are, multi-dimensional beings that can move between dimensions, all including the physical. Why not? Why would, there's no limits, except what we hold in our mind. I think that's what they really are, if you want to. So, what have we learned? We have learned that the universe is multidimensional. That outer fringe, that dark, there's little circles. That shows your lives. And as we progress, and this is again, it's a one-dimensional, it's very difficult to convey something so amazingly wonderful on a flat piece of paper. I just try to give you a, an indication of what it is. Each person is entering the densest, the outer crust of the universe, gaining personal experience. The time it takes to evolve doesn't matter because we're immortal. It really sounds crazy, but it doesn't matter. We have choices to make. Some people choose to accelerate their learning. Some people choose to learn to become more multidimensional. And most people don't even know it exists. What's wild is that most people think they're playing two-dimensional chess, don't they? Earth, heaven. Seven and a half billion people. The vast majority think they're playing a game of two-dimensional chess, and they're not. We're all playing multidimensional chess. And the only way you know that is to experience it for yourself so you can obtain the skills necessary. So, OBEs is a spiritual practice. I'm covering this very quickly. This, to me, is one of the most important topics. Here we are at the bottom in our physical body. Yogis have been doing this forever. For thousands and thousands of years, what have yogis done? They've meditated 
and they've went what they call in within themselves. But what are they doing? They're, they're transitioning, they're shifting consciousness between, from their outer vehicle of consciousness to their inner vehicle of consciousness. And this is the path that, the universal path to our higher self or to source or whatever you want to call it, whatever term you give it. Everyone is essentially, whether it be meditation, any kind of inner journeying you do, I don't care if you're using ayahuasca or you're meditating daily or you're using whatever substance comes and goes now in modern society or whether you're doing transcendental yoga. It's all this inner journey. This is what we're all doing. What out-of-body experiences essentially do, it's a different framing of that experience because you are exteriorizing one of your energy bodies to some extent and experiencing that aspect of that dimensional space. And that is exciting. It's a more active approach, I find, a more exciting approach than just sitting and meditating. But many people, what I call OBE's practice is meditation with intention. Core of it is still the same. We're shifting consciousness inward and we're doing it intentionally, intentionally. And by this practice, we have the ability to experience not only our multidimensional self, but our higher self and even source. Because we're hardwired to it. We're not separated. That's why mediums can talk, as all of you are interested apparently in the mediumship, which is fine. You know why they can communicate. They're right next to you right now. They're not separated. They're literally next to you. A medium in the old days, I grew up studying this stuff in what many would consider the old days. They were called sensitives. And I think it's a more accurate term. They're sensitive to the energies of non-physical consciousness that's around you. They're not spirits. They're just non-physical people that have shifted out of a biological body and now they're in a different energy body. It doesn't mean they're in their soul body. It just means that they're in a different energy body that is apparently close enough to you to communicate with. This is natural. Same thing for psychics. Why can some psychics read your future? Because when you, and I know this from personal experience, I and others have had out-of-body experiences where you begin to experience your own thought forms. It's wild because you see the formation. Every thought has a creative ability. We are creating our futures right now by the thought forms that we have around us, that we focus on. That's why it's important how you focus your thoughts because you're powerful. You're like a laser you're going to manifest what you most focus upon. We know this. There's nothing new about this. The point is, this is already taking shape all around you in non-physical dimensional space. What psychics are doing is they're reading the thought forms around you. They see different events. I once had an out-of-body experience where I saw a cruise ship with a big red fin. Didn't have a clue. Come back to my body, and I'm wondering, what the heck is that? You know, it's totally, you know, why would I view, and I actually view the ship. Why would I be viewing a, this ship with a big red fin? Made no sense to me. I jo I'm big on journaling. Journal everything. Dreams, lucid dreams, OB, everything. Dr wrote it down. About 10 days later, I received a call from, it was called Inner Voyage at the time, and I was asked to speak at a cruise ship going to the Bahamas which was a carnival cruise ship with a big red fin. During my OB, I was actually seeing the future of myself. You follow me? Everything is happening now, but we don't see it. We've, we've closed ourselves off of that potential. We are all mediums. We are all psychics. We are all explorers of consciousness. But you have to embrace that yourself. 
You have to open up to that capability. You don't need an intermediary. You have the ability. And this is, that's what self-empowerment's about. You have that ability, but most importantly, you have the ability to discover the answers for yourself. But you have to make the effort and potentially learn some new skills and have the courage to explore beyond what's, what is socially or what is commonly referred to as not quite in sync with our current belief systems that dominate our society and culture at the moment. You have to be a pioneer in a way. Bottom line, we are a mortal and highly creative non-physical species that molds our self-identity and our energy surroundings with our thoughts. And we're doing it all the time. But we have to begin to take, to, to realize it. Every thought you're spewing into the universe has creative potential. That's why it's so important not to focus. That's why this pos years ago it took off this positive thinking idea. But it's more than that. We have to begin to really understand that we're creating our reality on a regular basis and open ourselves to our capability of doing it in a much more elegant fashion. Another aspect that I'd like to cover in my limited time, the direct path is to our essence and to the answers we seek are all within us. They're not found in a book. I'm one of the few authors, I've written four books. And I'm still saying it's about the books are to give you the, some of the guidance you may need to develop your own skills to have your own experience. That's the purpose of the books. And we are always shifting our consciousness inward. Every night when you fall asleep, you're entering into an altered state of consciousness. For a, a third of your entire life, you are shifting. Guess what I and others have seen? And I've seen this with my pets, and I've seen it with my I have twin boys. I've seen it with them. When people are asleep, and I have an out-of-body experience, and I went and checked on my sleeping sons, guess what I saw? They were floating out of phase with their body as they slept. In other words, they were out of body. They weren't up to ceiling, nothing that dramatic. But it was a reversal of images. The floating body, to me, looked like the real body. And the physical body looked like the illusionary body. Because I was already, I was, you can only perceive what is in phase with your vibrational state. That's the only reality to you. Reality is relative to the vibrational state of the observer and participant. So. Same thing, I write about my dog following me during an out-of-body experience. I could even see what some people would call the silver cord of the animal. Same evolutionary cycle, just a different body, as far as I can tell. My point is that everyone, when we sleep, we are all having experiences. We are moving out of phase with our bodies. That's what sleep really is. Science, of course, only can focus on the biological aspects. Ah, you're going into REM five times, blah, blah, blah. That's, who cares? What's important is, is that you're actually beginning to shift your consciousness inward. That gives you more potential to have a profound experience. If you own it, if you begin to own your own abilities. Very important. This is just some of the information that I have available. But since we do have 12 minutes, I want to share with you, since this, this was build uh, introduction, I want to share with you in the next few minutes, just briefly, what is a typical technique like? And we have enough time to do this. If you would, just get comfortable for a moment. Just relax. Take a deep breath and close your eyes. And I'm going to just run you through, real briefly, the target technique. This is a technique that I had my first out-of-body experience with. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, and just allow yourself to let go and flow. Let go all thought of the day. Just allow yourself to comfortably float. 
let go all random thought and clear the blackboard of your mind, your third eye, and allow yourself to open up to a new image. And I want you to use the unlimited power of your mind and imagine the front door of your home or apartment. Imagine the door closely. You've been there many times. You can begin to see the details of your front door, the door handle. What color is the door? Is it fiberglass or steel? What is the door handle made of? Is it brass? Is it chrome? Reach out your energy body, your imaginary arm and hand, and touch your door handle. Feel yourself present at your front door. Feel it happening. You're there. You begin to perceive the front door. And now, gently, feel yourself opening the front door. You can feel the coldness of the door handle or the warmth of it. And you're opening your front door and we're stepping within your home. And you can begin to perceive the details. You know it extremely well. And now I want you to focus on a target. Focus on an object you may have made somewhere in your home. And feel yourself moving to it. It can be anything, a picture, a lamp, a statue. Select three objects and feel yourself gently moving to each object. Feel yourself at the first one. Imagine it. Sense it. Make it real with the unlimited power of your mind. Feel yourself looking at this object, studying it. Be present with it. Focus your undivided attention upon it. And as you do, your body becomes more and more relaxed and at ease, letting go. With every breath, you feel yourself moving deeper and deeper into an ideal state for you. And now, you can perceive this object clearly. You can reach out your hand and touch it. You can see it, perceive it from different angles. Be present with it in your home. And now move to another object in your house. You're instantly there. Feel yourself present. Reach out your hand and touch this object. Examine it closely. What are the colors, the texture? Feel it. Use all of your senses. Be present with this object. Focus your undivided attention upon it. And as you do, with each breath, you feel yourself moving deeper and deeper into an ideal state for you, letting go of all attachments, moving, being with this object and away from your body. Feel and sense your presence in your home. If there's an animal or a person, you may begin to sense their presence in your home if there's one that's available. And now gently move to a third object in your home. Feel yourself present. Be part of this object. Feel it, sense it. Focus your undivided attention. Hold your intention on this object and away from your body as your body relaxes deeper and deeper and deeper. Letting go all 
attachments. Letting go. Allow yourself to be present and perceive your environment. At first, it may just be a visual experience. But as you do this, it becomes stronger and stronger. We go where we focus our attention. In an average technique, I would do this for 45 minutes and you would have 25 minutes of free flow to explore it, to focus upon it. You'd be allowed to click out or drift off even. As you focus your undivided attention away from your body, this is the technique that I did back in 73, that I got my first out-of-body experience. It's very simple. When you're ready, you can take a deep, deep breath and open your eyes. It's very, very simple technique. It's a matter of focusing your conscious awareness away from your body, and it's a simple principle. We go, our awareness, our consciousness goes where we focus. It's that simple. Every, this applies to all things. Think about it. You think about shoes, and you're suddenly at the mall looking at shoes. This applies to everything in your life. Every knick-knack and object in your life, in your house, including your house, was first a thought, was it not, on some level. More than likely it was a thought of some kind. The thought precedes the manifestation and the action. This is a common principle and it works. This is why, this is just one of the techniques uh, that is used today to initiate. There's all kinds, there's motion techniques. This is a visual technique. There's many different kinds of techniques that I teach because people respond to different stimulus. Not ever, we're all different. Some people visualize well, some people don't. But there is a technique that resonates with just about everybody. So if you want to pursue this, learn some of the techniques and then practice them as you're falling asleep. And give it, give it 30 days. It only takes 20, 25 minutes, half an hour at most. It's like med meditation with intention. If this intrigues you, if you want to verify this for yourself. For more information, and I have a lot of free information, that's, my website is astroinfo.org. I have uh, several articles on there. I've included, I think, 30 techniques. You don't have to buy a book. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just, I want you to be aware of what's available. There's keys to control about mindset is very important. If you want to be a serious explorer of consciousness, you have to be really know about your own mindset. Fear is a giant block. You have to overcome the blocks. Fear being generally the number one one. I have all kinds of effective mindset articles, techniques, how to connect with your higher self, and much other information on how to do this and do it effectively based on proven techniques that have been around for decades. This is not experimental. Thousands of people initiate profound experiences using these kinds of techniques. So I hope that you have the time and the inclination to at least check it out and explore this for yourself. And I think you'll find it to be very exciting. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Also, um, at 2 o'clock tomorrow, I'll be doing a three-hour, um, what for me is kind of a mini workshop, because my normal workshop is six days. <laughs> but for those that are interested, that's also available. So anyway, thank you again for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, hope to see you again. Thank you.